So as much fun as it is to mess around with firmware and uh, configure things, the whole point of this is to be able to print files. So in the good old days with Marlin, you'd stick your G-code on, on an SD card, push the SD card into the front of the printer, select something to print, and go. And that has changed now. With this system, uh, pushing your card into the front of the printer doesn't get you any closer to printing. If you have a file that you've taken from your slicer, you've sliced it, and you've turned, you've selected save to removable SD card, you can still do that. Your will save it and it say, we're good there. And you could eject it from here, but only if you're going somewhere. Normally what I do now is I go to my SD card. The file is here. If I want to inspect the file, I could open it. But if I want to get it into my printer, now what I have to do is I go to main sale. I select Upload and Print, I navigate to my SD card, I select the G-code file, and I say Open that. Main sale uploads the file. And upload is successful. So now the G-code is present on the main sale interface, and printing has begun. Okay, it didn't say, Mother, may I? It has begun. We're printing layer zero because right now we have begun the process of heating the bed. Bed is at 100% power. So I can stop this thing. I can do an emergency stop. And it will stop the print. I will restart the host. Now that's if you want to use an SD card. What I prefer to do is to integrate my slicer with Moonraker directly so that I can upload from Cura to Moonraker to Mainsail and then print. I don't need an SD card anymore. It adds an option here that wasn't there before, upload directly to the printer that I have connected to Moonraker. When I select that, I get a dialog box that says, OK, that's the file you want me to send. I will include a thumbnail sketch because you asked me to. Do you want me to start the print job at the same time after I've uploaded? And I say no, because I want to be there. If you're right next to your printer, you could say yes or and tell it to just remember that and do that every time. Or you can leave it the way I do uh, so that you can upload to mainsail from your slicing machine and then go downstairs to the printer and launch the print from there. So upload either way. I get feedback from Moonraker saying that's what I'm doing. Off she goes. And it'll tell me you've, uh, you've successfully made the transfer. So this little block diagram is crude but hopefully effective. Deidre's Reloaded on this diagram references the t5uid.py. Uh, Clipper is Clipper and Mainsail is Mainsail. So Mainsail actually communicates with Clipper as well, but through Moonraker. Moonraker is the integrating agent. So Cura comes with a plugin that I'll show you how to use. It connects Cura to Moonraker um, by connecting to the um, machine IP address and using a plugin. And the plugin will forward everything that it gets from Cura to Moonraker. And Moonraker will then forward that to Clipper. The stuff that Deidre's Reloaded wants to see, like the, uh, the messages that are embedded in the G-code file, are stripped by Clipper and passed into Deidre's Reloaded on demand. Every time it gets to that part of the G-code where there's an M117 message, sends it to the display. Mainsail also gets this stuff. I didn't draw the interface here because it's truly through Moonraker and into Mainsail. It just becomes spaghetti. So you'll have to forgive the simplicity of the diagram here. But there's the gist of it. It's Moonraker we want Cura to speak to. So to install the Moonraker plugin, come into Cura, go to Marketplace, type Moonraker under search. When this comes up, if it's not already installed, it'll say install right there. Click the install button. Um, Cura will install the plugin and then it'll tell you to restart for the changes to take effect. Restart Cura. Come back here and we'll show you how to make this connection through the plugin.
Now, I have already created a printer here, but this is what you would need to do. Okay? If we go add a printer, tell it it's not an Ultimaker printer, and tell it it's not networked even if it is, because that's how you get to this menu. Scroll down to Creality 3D. Go to CR6 SE. Even the Max guys do that. I'll show you what to change in a minute. And give it a unique name. So CR6 um, Clipper, for instance. And by doing this, keep the name short. Well, by doing this, now you can have Cura configured to support the community firmware by using the machine name you had before. And you can switch, um, if you flash your machine over to Clipper, you can switch here to Slice while you're working with Clipper. And you can move your machine back and forth between the two firmwares very conveniently just by choosing which machine you're speaking to on the Manage Machines menu. So we add that. We now have a new machine here. We choose that machine and we say Manage Printers. It comes to the new machine, and you can say Connect Moonraker. And because you've installed that plugin, you now get this dialog. The IP address that we gave it, a fixed address earlier, now we know what to type here because it doesn't understand that you just reloaded local. And it does insist, you see the red text here. It does insist you go the whole hog, HTTP colon forward slash twice. Now it's a real URL. They're very unforgiving here. Then you go to Upload tab. On the Upload tab, if you want the thumbnail, select that. If you don't, just leave it on G code and you won't get a thumbnail. But I can't think of a reason not to want the thumbnail. I want an upload dialog. I do. That's how I prefer it. You could say fire and forget. You get the same behavior you saw with the SD card. It will just load and start printing right away. But I prefer to have my, my say in things and time things. If you sometimes want to vary, you know, sometimes you want to start and sometimes you don't, don't put this here. If you always want to give the same answer, you can click that. And if you want to automatically hide the message box after a while, just click that and it'll take it away rather than leaving it on the screen all the time. I have no idea what these do. Sorry, I've never needed them and I've never used them. So something else to discover someday. Now you can also monitor your print from within Cura instead of using the browser. If you tell it what the stream is, the web stream for the camera, it will hook that in. You can even tell it to rotate the camera image or give you the mirror of the image depending on what your camera setup is and your preferences. But I'm not taking you so far as to install a camera in this video series, so we won't be doing anything with that today. But when you've now completed the upload dialog, we've completed the connection dialog, and we can say create. We're also going to need to go into the machine settings because we've created a new printer and it thinks we're using a Marlin printer. So we're going to want to select all of that and delete it. Select all of this and delete it. The NG code is easy. You're just going to invoke the end print macro and at its simplest, you would do the start print macro would be invoked in the start G code. But as with most things, there's a bit more complexity here to get better functionality. So I want you to go to the cr6.cfg file, jump down to the start print macro, and take all of this nozzle diameter down to the end of the start print line, all of that in the comment field, and copy it. And come with me back to the Cura machine uh, settings dialog and paste 
what you just copied into the start G code. That line's a long one, so you have to scroll back to the left. Sorry about the flashing, that's my uh, help function keeps trying to show me something. Okay, so we're back to the left margin now. These semicolons indicate a comment, so to Cura and the G code readers, those are comments and they won't cause any harm. But according to the Clipper geniuses at Clipper 3D and Clipper Discord, those comments that you have here are actually read by Moonraker. Moonraker can use that information in ways that were not disclosed to me. I just take it on good faith that if I give them that information, my life will be better. And start print, equivalent to the end print macro there, start print now passes some parameters. It's going to pass variables for the hot end temperature. Hot end temp is the name of the variable in Clipper. And material print temperature is what Cura calls the variable. So I'm basically doing an assign of this parameter, the initial temperature for the nozzle, to the hot end temperature variable, and you'll see how that works in a minute. I'm doing the same thing with bed temp. The initial print temperature for first layer comes from Cura. That's the name of the variable, very long name, and I'm assigning that to the variable bed temp as I run the start print macro. I did promise if you're a max owner, you want to change these three numbers to 400. So change X, Y, and Z max values there to 400. The rest of us with SEs don't touch that. Now, just close the dialog and Clipper says, and Cura says, okay, thank you, I've updated that now. So we've done the connection, we've done the machine settings, we've called it CR6 Clipper, that's the printer we're using. Now let me turn your attention back to the DJ's Reloaded Clipper component that we downloaded oh so long ago. If it's still in 128 for you on the D drive, that's great. Wherever you put it, get back to the Related Changes folder, and we'll look at that thing I ignored. Under Related Changes, there's an image. And if you look at that image, it says Post Processing Scripts. So in Cura, one of the things that you can do in Cura is to go to the extensions, Go to Post Processing, Modify G Code. And what this does is it will take your G Code file and reiterate it through the post processing scripts if you selected any and activated any here. And that gives you access to a lot of additional functionality. Things like, you know, if you want to change your filament at a height and get a different color, you would insert a script for pause at height. So what I've done is point to two of those post-processing plugins. Find display progress on LCD. We are in alphabetical order, so display progress on LCD. I want my display, my stock display, to show me how much time is remaining. It's going to use the M117, that's the message on the screen, to send that information. And I'm suggesting that you ask them to update that information every 15 seconds. You'll see other choices here. You choose whatever you like, every 15 seconds, every layer. Thing is, it'll depend on whether your layers are long ones, you know, taking 30 minutes to do a layer, or short ones, every five seconds you've done a layer, as to which one is really going to work better for you. You can come back any time and change it. I've recommended 15 seconds as a start place. If you also click the percentage box here, which I didn't think to show in the graphic, it will support the percent complete display on the Dejus reloaded display. Again, extensions, post processing, modify G code, find a script, display file name and layer on LCD. I did not enable this uh, scrolling file name because got very annoying to have scrolling file names and scrolling messages on the same screen. Um, text to display. You don't want it to say anything in particular here that's visible in the message because there's only so much space on the screen. So I just put in a blank space to prevent it from the default value of file name colon uh, appearing on my screen. 
And you get a choice of, do you want to call the initial layer layer zero, which is what internally it's called, or layer one, because people don't usually start by counting with the number zero. We usually assign one to the first thing. So your preference, uh, place it here, I suggested a one. And display max layer number, yes please. So I get to see layer printing layer one of uh, 532 layers um, when I come to print. So we go back here and we say, I just want you to print a space, not a word. I want you to start with the number one like the rest of us. I want you to display the, le the maximum layer. And no, I don't want you to use the word printing or I do. Your choice, printing layer one of, or just saying layer one of, whatever, we know it's printing. Your choice, when you get to very large prints, you know, if you're gonna print on a max, and you're going up to 400 layers at 0.2 millimeters per layer, that's a whole lot of layers. And you might find that the message doesn't fit within 26 characters if you have too much text there. It may not fit anyway. I've never printed that high. so. Best of luck with it, but that's how it's configured. And now you see this, um, you see this symbol with a red circle and a quantity in there. And this is how many scripts are active right now. The help function here is showing me uh, which ones they are and the fact that they're active. And they're simply there. Every time I press slice, it performs those activities. In fact, if I save this G-code file to my SD card, and I can show you that code, and then if we look inside the G-code that we just produced, we see the M73 messages that will give us progress in terms of percent complete, the M117 messages that will tell us how much time is left in the print, before the print is complete. We see the commentary that we added inside the, uh, the start G code populated. The variable names have been replaced by the actual values for the current print. We see the start macro, start print macro being invoked. So Clipper will see that as well. And the temperatures for the initial layer temperature and the initial bed temperature have been transformed into numbers, which are then now passed as variables to that macro. And we see the layers progress. Layer one of 596 will appear on the screen. Now, if time goes extremely quickly in real time, these things are processed sometimes in microseconds. Sometimes it takes seconds for a command to execute. So you may or may not see the initial time left. You might see it. The layer and the time left messages sometimes conflict with one another, kind of as an accident of how long it takes to print a layer and um, how often I clear the message field at every 30 seconds. So when you're looking at the screen, it's not entirely satisfactory to me. I Someday I would like to replace the need for those messages, take the need for these messages away and put variables on the screen that are always there and are maintained just like as in main sale interface just like in clipper screen so it's not there today because i haven't conquered the code yet this is what i can do for you in the meantime now it's up to you if you're an ultimaker cura user this is how you integrate your slicer with clipper in general moonraker specifically and D just reloaded through those scripts. I'm Thinker's Bluff. I've updated, by the way, the Discord link here. I got feedback that the other um, invitation link I'd, I'd been sharing with you had expired. Sorry about that. It wasn't supposed to be. I think Discord made some changes and decided to force me to reissue the invitation. So there's an invitation that does work. Please join me on Discord if you're not already a member. Share with the community what you're doing with DJs Reloaded on your CR6. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.